Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Peace and blessings upon you all. Yes, students, we talked a lot about the semaphore now. Okay, we see the classical uh, problems as well, and uh, we the most important thing in semaphore was there was no sipping, uh, and it doesn't waste the CPU time. That was the best thing we saw in semaphore, and it is a powerful, powerful tool for enforcing mutual exclusion, as well as the coordination, coordinate processes. Having said and done that, uh, semaphore is not uh, actually a good thing to use. Why so? Because firstly, variant signals are scattered among several processes. We saw the, for example, producer process and consumer process. One process is doing weight, another process is doing signaling. So this is a kind of problem. Okay, um, because a programmer need to keep track of the calls of variant signal if uh, the corresponding weight and corresponding signals are not met because they, they are they, they are scattered around the code so it's hard to track them okay if they are not done in the correct order uh, it can cause in deadlock as we saw last time also and it can it can create a problems so being variant signal being scattered is a kind of problem okay now that, that this is what, that's what we say that it's difficult to understand their effects uh, because they are scattered in the code okay uh, and the usage must be correct in all processes now maybe one uh, malicious process one bad process can actually uh, uh, that that uh, the, the, that balance in a variant signal can be disturbed uh, by one malicious process and that will fail the entire collection of processes right and if we have a very simple algorithm, it requires more than one semaphore. Okay, then, so it's, it's kind of a complex as well. Uh, above all, semaphores are a low level or too low level. Uh, we can have easily, we can uh, make, you know, uh, mistakes. For example, we have, we are doing some weight uh, operation on semaphore. Uh, we should be doing signaling of, uh, of that on, the, uh, on that variable. But maybe we are doing again the weight programmer may make, may make mistakes so it's again a problem right so it can create a problems if we do like this because we have to uh, you know match the weight and signals uh, it is done by the programmer and programmer can make errors so this is uh, actually gonna fail now semaphores are used for both uh, mutual exclusion uh, okay or mutex it is used for the mutex uh, and as well as for the condition synchronization you know you have a condition synchronization or what I say the signaling and all uh, like for example producer consumer problem that producer produces something and consumer can consume only when something is produced and so on so this uh, conditional synchronization is also done by the same semaphore right so semaphores are used for both Condition synchronization as well as mutual exclusion. Uh, that's again kind of a drawback of the semaphores. And when uh, say uh, if if a process has locked something and it crashes in the critical section, so what will happen? Uh, because there is no signaling being done. So there are a lot of issues with the semaphore, and we're gonna we wanna fix it, and uh, we are gonna fix it with a. Uh, because this was the OS, we uh, tried to do, do things, but now we have a language construct, and that's called as a monitor. So today's uh, lecture is about the monitor. So you understand what is monitor and how we implement it, and all those things. So monitor is where we uh, give job to the compiler because it's a high-level uh, language construct. Okay. Uh, for dealing with synchronization like we have a class in Java like we see in a C++ or Java we have a classes and a class we have some shared data and this data if, if you want to access the data you have some methods inside and you're gonna access the method and method will access the shared data so this is uh, the way the classes work and it's a kind of same okay and here the programmer only has to say what to protect and it is the compiler who actually does it maybe uh, internally does it using the semaphores or whatever as a programmer we don't care about that thing we only tell what you want to protect and it's the compiler 
who actually does the job okay so basic structure is gonna be like this so we have a monitor class where we have fields and we have methods like I said in a class okay uh, so one method inside monitor can access the field this is important that only one method inside the monitor can access the field this is guaranteed uh, so at most one thread can be active inside the monitor at any time so it's a high level abstraction okay uh, that provides a convenient and effective mechanism for synchronization what we actually have is a monitor class which will have some name whatever you like to call it and then we have some shared data see from this is the shared data and you want to access it using some procedures so this is p1 this is p2 and so on it's a pn okay then there is some initialization code as well and these are the some procedures which does the operations on the shared data and the why we have an entry queue because at a, a single time there will be only one thread or process uh, executing uh, some procedure and then uh, accessing the shared data the rest of the guys who comes in uh, will be put in this entry queue so all of these will, will be an entry queue uh, okay so uh, so the lock mechanism is uh, so is done because we have only uh, one pr pr uh, you know uh, thread or a process active inside the monitor the rest if other guys also come they have to be in an entry queue these are the other processes which are waiting for their entrance into the monitor okay now uh, most important thing here is that in semaphores uh, semaphore used for both mutex as well as for the condition synchronization but here uh, we have two different things okay now if you have to do uh, like in some sem of course the condition synchronization we can do here by the some conditional variables uh, I talk about uh, that in a while so our uh, monitor is nothing but a software module with one or more procedures initial initialization sequence and some shared data uh, which need to be protected okay uh, this local shared variables are accessible only by the monitors procedures okay uh, there's something missing here wait a second we have many many procedures and one of the procedures uh, will be used and a process enters the monitor by invoking one of its procedures okay and only one process can be in a monitor at one time that's guaranteed so that is how mutex is done here because one thread or one process is uh, allowed in a monitor so the compiler takes care of all these things so monitor ensures mutual exclusion okay uh, so you don't need to uh, program this constraint explicitly so in some of four we are doing it explicitly we are send signals and all those things but he here you don't need to do that because uh, only one process if anybody want to have a, want to access the monitor that data uh, which was in a monitor okay uh, then uh, this data then we have to you have to access this one of the procedures okay and compiler will take care that if there are multiple processes coming in uh, out of the one will be given a chance to execute the monitor rest will be in the entry queue so by that it will make it sure that there is no problem uh, of mutual exclusion okay so that's why shared data is protected because we have placed, placed that in a monitor and the monitor locks the shared data on the process entry so anybody who want to enter uh, the monitor okay um, compiler will put them in the entry queue and only one of the one of the one of them one of the processes or threads will be inside the monitor now that was the mutual explosion now how to do the conditional synchronization for that we have a condition variables there may be one or more condition variables okay so that's what say process synchronization or that signaling uh, what we talked about in the sum of words is done with the conditional variables okay so be, uh, like we have a, a producer or consumer uh, sorry for example there was a producer consumer problem of a buffer boundary buffer problem that uh, we have producer consumer and producer has to see if uh, this is empty or not and consumer has to see if something is filled at least one slot is filled or not so this uh, conditional synchronization or signaling is done by the conditional variables like we have here some variables x and y 
okay they are local to the monitors accessible only within the monitor so they are not outside they are accessible within and uh, they can be accessed uh, and changed by two methods here weight and signal okay now weight and signal here are different from the semaphore weight and signal where we something increments and decrements and we do all those things if signal uh, in the semaphore was incrementing and the semaphore variable and weight was decrementing we don't do that here the x dot weight only do what it will block that process uh, which is waiting uh, you know uh, on some x uh, if you want to block a process on the x you will say x dot weight and if you want to uh, you know resume execution or because of that condition is satisfied the x condition satisfied do x dot signal now there may be uh, a lot of processes uh, waiting on the X. Maybe other process comes in, waits for X. Another process comes in, it will also waits on the X. Uh, now signal, when you do signal, it will see if um, some process is waiting on the X, it will, uh, you know, actually uh, un unblock that. Okay. Uh, but if there is no such process, the X dot signal is just uh, ignored. It will be of no use. Uh, this, this will be unlike your semaphores if you do signaling that will increment the semaphore so if you do signaling without any process okay then that can create a problem but here there's no problem because it doesn't increment or decrement anything okay because here we don't have some variables like in semaphore we had we had a variables and we're incrementing it and then decrementing that but here we don't have any kind of variables that is important when you x dot weight here or uh, x dot signal so this is a conditional weight and conditional signal very different from the semaphores now uh, the condition uh, variables can be one on one many there will be many uh, one condition or many conditions so uh, conditions can run from c uh, 1 to cn and uh, there's a local data which you want to access and there is a condition variable which is local to the monitor uh, okay and there are some procedures the procedure 1 up to procedure k and some process enters say for example into the monitor and uh, does the you know Waits, say for example, it waits on a condition. Maybe that condition is not satisfied. Maybe uh, the buffer is full, so you can't put more uh, as a producer into it, or as a consumer, there is nothing in a buffer, so you can't take anything in. So you have to wait on a condition full or condition empty, for example. So where it will go, you will be sitting inside uh, th this condition Q now. Okay, that process will be here, waiting here, right? So um, so that means uh, a process can be either in a entering queue because uh, if some process is in the queue uh, because some process is already in the monitor okay now uh, if some process has gone into the monitor uh, executing uh, inside the monitor it may have uh, you know some conditional weight on some condition it's trying to wait so it will go into the condition uh, queue on the left uh, which is shown here right so we can have um, a, our process technically either in a uh, entering process queue or in a condition uh, queue now uh, entering process queue is there because some process is in a monitor this guy is here some process here because it's waiting on some condition to get fulfilled and uh, you uh, running process uh, from monitor can go into the condition queue uh, by the uh, applying the uh, weight condition weight on that uh, so that's why it's a little difference uh, written C weight uh, because in a weight we have an SM4 also so we can add in a C weight on a condition okay we will take that into condition queue and if we do signaling a C signal can brought that uh, anybody who uh, is waiting on that condition back to the you know uh, monitor now when you do the weight uh, on some uh, condition and you are not running in a, in, a, in a monitor so you are in a condition queue you can in the meantime go for the next thread or process uh, from the uh, entering queue ent uh, entering queue right let me give an example to make you understand this uh, uh, let me put up an analogy here okay say for example uh, there is a dentist okay and um, this is a side room and uh, people are entering uh, waiting here in a queue okay say pe uh, people guy one guy two P3 and so on they're waiting here for the turn and, and some P0 is already inside so they have to wait they can't enter right now P0 maybe um, dentist is doing some work on this P0 and now he may be tired or he may need something else uh, which uh, maybe uh, 
dentist is uh, waiting uh, for the filling which is to be done now so uh, you can't uh, because filling is not prepared maybe and you can't do it on the p0 so p0 is not finished yet so it can't go out so it is being taken into the restroom so we say hey sleep here in a while take a nap and in the meantime we uh, load the p1 now p1 goes inside and p0 is waiting okay now dentist works on a p1 and p1 may, may also be uh, now after doing some work on a p1 uh, P1 uh, now dentist feels that P1 has to do something which is not to be done uh, right now or it may take need to take half an hour nap after that we can do the next procedure so P1 is also waiting here right in the meantime P2 uh, comes in now P2 is not here P2 is inside okay now when P2 is inside maybe he's finished here it, it was just a scaling uh, done on a P2 and uh, in a half of a time P2 is done he's finished it now what will he do is when the, when when a person comes in he locks the door right he doesn't allow other guys to come now when the P2 finishes if he uh, opens the door other P3 will come in but before uh, he go out he should do what he should see if anybody is uh, taking a nap then it is the, it is his turn so dentist in inter actually p2 will not go out actually it will make some process uh, here that uh, those guys were sleeping and say okay i am done uh, because p0 and p1 are waiting so maybe on something and and p2 may wake them up uh, one process it may wake and then it may it may leave okay so uh, likewise uh, is 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 a monitor uh, and here if uh, there is nobody waiting here you can unlock the door and go out so the other process may come in one important point also is here when a process uh, in, 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 in the inside the monitor uh, waits on some condition and goes for sleeping uh, inside the monitor okay it does not take the lock with it it re automatically releases the lock and uh, goes to the sleep okay uh, that's about otherwise if we if it takes lock and uh, with it and sleep it may never come back so it will uh, no process can enter the monitor so it has to release the lock before it goes to the sleep so a conditional variable enables a thread to sleep inside the critical section uh, but if it has any any lock uh, that lock is uh, atomically released when a thread is put to the sleep it is being done atomically so you can't actually split it up because there may be time out timeouts and uh, it may it may sleep uh, with the lock and that's a problem uh, we may also have here the third operation uh, also that's a, we, we, we can do wait we can do signal the wait uh, we can do one operation on a con conditional uh, an operation on condition variables one is the wait okay um, let me put it in a formal way so these two processes are already we discussed that that it's, this is the weight uh, it uh, puts the thread or process to the sleep okay but also atomically releases the lock it releases the lock go to sleep two things are done atomically um, and when the process uh, wakes up it requires that lock so signal does what wakes up a waiting thread if uh, there is someone someone waiting otherwise it does nothing and there is also a third one that's called the broadcast it wakes all the waiting threads maybe there's a reader writer problem and a uh, lot of readers are coming up because there was a writer okay and writer has come up uh, so it has blocked uh, the things now re in the meantime there were a lot of readers they are in an entry queue uh, okay uh, or, or um, they uh, in, in case of monitor here they were all in a sleeping queue for example inside okay in a condi uh, conditional queue uh, say for example one reader came in and he has some uh, uh, he was waiting for some condition and they were uh, somehow all of them were in the in a in a condition queue and there was some write operation going on now so they they can't uh, come up so when write is finished actually all these readers can come up if their condition certified so you can uh, apply the broadcast at that time so it will wake all the waiting threads okay